last minute shakeup at 5.30 a.m., laundry situation not good. And when your focus is on helping your clients, it's easy to forget about yourself. But NASM knows trainers. Morning ride is okay. And staying in front of the day isn't always nice as ride. simple as one, two, three. So when the unexpected has you <laughs> pressing pause. What's the latest on creatine? I'm going to get back to you on that. Let NASM1 help you press play. Visit nasm.org to sign up for a membership today. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I want to go over what I consider to be five benefits of working with a personal trainer. I, I got to admit, I'm a big fan of uh, working with personal trainers, and I'm assuming all of you are as well. But have you taken time to, to kind of put together what are the benefits of working with a personal trainer? So I came up with five benefits. Now, under each of the benefits are a lot of other benefits that talk about it. But let me just kind of go over quickly what some of these benefits are. And I'm going to highlight everything first. Number one is safety. Number two is goal setting and achieving. Number three is accountability. Number four is motivation and inspiration. And number five is behavior change. But there's a there's a lot to talk about underneath that. So let's talk about number one, safety. I've mentioned this, and I remember I've mentioned it kind of recently, that I had done a lot of work with a physical therapist. I'd known him for years, even before uh, I think that he had finished school. And after he had finished school, I had referred a lot of people to him, and I asked him why he never referred people back to me. And he said, I don't refer people to personal trainers because they hurt people, which I thought was interesting because he was a personal trainer. But I think what he had seen is a lot of uh, CPTs ended up, people were hurt, and they were coming to them uh, to get physical therapy. Well, when you're a personal trainer and uh, you're and you're a physical therapist and your network is for personal trainers most of the people that you see that are referring people to you are personal trainers then they it's a likelihood that they could have gotten hurt in the gym but i'd like to i would like to preface with this i don't think that you are more likely to get hurt with a trainer than you are to get hurt on your own in fact the number one job of a personal trainer is to ensure that you don't get hurt. First, make sure your client is safe. Then push them. First, make sure your client is safe and then attain goals. First, make sure your client's safe. And then you can focus on motivation and inspiration and all the things. But first, you make sure your client is safe. Yes, it's a trainer's job to push their clients, but it's good trainers that know that you have to ease into workouts. You got to start slowly and you progress. Um, you can be told to push, but you also need to be told to back off sometimes. And just last summer, uh, or last year, not summer, uh, I started training a guy, 76 years old, referred to me through a physical therapist. And uh, the physical therapist said, I'll never, never refer to you. Now he refers people to me. This is great news, but he said, you got to watch out for this guy because he's going to try to show off and show you what he can do. And and that's true. He wanted to show me what he could do. I'd say, oh, let's do 15 of these. He was like, I can do 15. I can do 25 of them. You want me to do 25? And he'd just keep going. And I'd have to be like, yo, Maury, bring it down, man. Like, we're going to take a break. We're going to do it again. We're not trying to do, we're not trying to win all the workout right now. We're not trying to achieve everything right now. And my concern is if you haven't lifted in a while, a lot of people do this. You can lift, you can build, you can you can say, oh, my muscles can do this. But what you don't think about is what your muscles will do for the next two days after you've done something you haven't done in a while. Think about it if you go in a, uh, you play sports you haven't done in a while. I think about it like the driving range hitting golf balls. I don't do that very often. And after a hundred balls and I whack them down the fairway, just kidding. That's not where they go. But when I hit those balls, uh, 
I if there was another bucket of a hundred, I'd hit those two. But I'm telling you right now, I had a hundred balls. I hit twenty of them. If all I did was stop there, the next day I'd be sore. So don't do it just because you're like, I feel like I could keep going. I could keep hitting those those golf balls. But you have no idea how sore you're going to be. And that's why it's important for us to focus on helping people back off. It's not just pushing people. And sometimes you got to ask people to, to back off. And some people want to show you how strong they are. They want to show you, listen, I've seen it. I know strong people. It's I don't need you to prove it to me. What I need you to prove is that you're willing to work and you're willing to listen. And I'm going to help you get to your goals. One of those ways is another reason safety is important. And what we do is we focus on form. So that's number two. We're going to talk about like sometimes you need to get people to back off. Uh, number two, when it comes to safety, it's about form and technique. Let me see how you're performing the movement. It's not that you can lift it. It is also how you go about lifting. It is not that you can produce a movement. It is oftentimes how you go about it that is going to indicate how your body holds up. And we need to be very, very aware of these things. Um, and then finally, like the last thing under safety is that anything physical has a potential to do harm. And so our job is to mitigate that as much as possible, to be aware of it, to watch people. Because I like to see people, they do their, let's say, shoulder press. And they get shoulder press and they kind of get to this little last rep and they're back arches and one arm goes up before the other and you see the struggle and it's okay just to be like, hey, that's good. That's good. Go ahead and put it down. And they're like, no, I can do it. Cool. But what's happened is that your muscle has already hit that point of fatigue. So you're not getting extra benefits from muscles because you're able to eke out that last repetition that you were really hoping to get up and the left arm went up pretty quick, but the right arm's taking about 45 more seconds before it straightens out. You don't need it. You benefit more by taking the break and do it again. And when the form starts to fail, we can stop. That's okay. Because then we can just pick it up and we can address everything through volume. We can address it through breaks. We can address it through weight. But we don't have to address it by doing everything in worse form just to reach the number I was hoping for. My goal for you isn't a number necessarily. My goal for you is the push. It is the effort. It is the outcome. And I don't want to put you at risk for a number. So safety is priority. Number two, number one is safety. Number two is goal setting and achieving. Here's the first thing I want to talk about. My goals for you are your goals for you. Now, I've got other goals that I might have for you. But if I put my priority and my goals ahead of what you want, then you might as well walk away now. You're not interested in that. You're interested in what you're interested in. You can go up to a trainer very often and say, hey, I've got some real goals that I want to accomplish, but let me just run run it by you and see if you've got other things that you would like for me to be able to do. That's in part what we do. But if we downplay somebody else's goals that are reasonable, that are reasonable, I had years ago, years ago, I first opened the gym years ago, I had a, a very short and an overweight woman came in and she brought me pictures of Jennifer Aniston and told me that she wanted to look like her. And, and I was like, this is why they made SMART goals, which we'll get into. There are some things that aren't uh, uh, achievable. And I want to look at that and say, hey, this isn't through fitness. This is through a whole global change. And the goal for that now conversation is it you want to look like Jennifer Aniston or do you want to uh, feel better about how you look or about how you move or about there's a lot of other things we need to break down. And that's where we come in handy. Because we're trying to get people to create goals. We need to make sure that they're they're attainable. But then this is where we start this kind of smart goals that I mentioned before, which the smart goals uh, is really creating a plan. We got to put a plan together. 
And so the SMART goals, you're probably familiar with them, but let's just break them down. SMART goals, SMART. S is specific. Be specific with what you want. <clears throat> and so I want to look like Jennifer Anderson. Cool. That's specific in an incredibly vague way. Like, is there something else that you want to do? And let's shrink that timeline. Shrink the timeline. <clears throat> How about let's start with the first five pounds, whether that is the first five pounds of lifting weight or the first five pounds of losing weight, whatever that five pounds is, but let's say five pounds. All right. So I'm going to be specific. We're going to measure it. We're going to measure what those goals are. And then we look at it. So that's specific losing weight. How much measurable five pounds. The A is for attainable. Is that a realistic kind of, uh, you know, are we going to be able to attain that? Um, and, and that's important. I want to, I want to attain it, but the, the R is, is it realistic? I want to know, uh, are we really outstretched here? And then let's put a timeline on it because the timeline works for you and it works for me. If I have a timeline, I'm going to push you to try to make sure that you are on your timeline, that I am as invested as in your goals and reaching them as you are. And then you want to make sure that I'm as invested in reaching these goals as you are. So we see these SMART goals and we set them and we make a decision. We create a plan around it and then we work towards it. That's it. That's it. And then I provide programs. That's the next one. I want to provide programs based on those goals. That's what I do. We're going to talk about goal setting. We're going to prepare it. We're going to do our SMART goals. And then I'm going to put a program together to get us to those goals. And then in order to put that program together, I'm going to have assessments. We're going to do assessments. And those assessments can be a lot of different things. And they probably should be. They should be movement assessments. They should be strength assessments. They should be cardio assessments. They should be flexibility assessments. I'm going through a series of assessments and I'm tracking it. I'm tracking it and I'm showing progress. And you can get to a point where you're like, it's very hard for me to lift more weight. That's a difficult thing. We say, okay, well, let's go back to our cardio and let's see if we can get more distance on a rower in a certain amount of time. Let's see if we can go on the ski erg and get more calories in a certain amount of time. Let's see if we can go onto the bike or the treadmill and see if we can get a distance within a certain amount of time. And then we just start knocking things off. And then you get tired, you get burnt out of one, then we switch and we say, okay, let's now switch you to a different goal, which is still going to give you your cardio respiratory output needs. So it's still helping us get healthier, still helping us go towards your goals, whatever those goals are. Number three is accountability. But before we go into accountability, first, let me say this episode of the NASM CPT podcast is brought to you by NASM One, the membership for trainers and coaches. Members enjoy unlimited access to hundreds of career resources. Get the Edge app to schedule and program clients. Enjoy half off all certifications and specializations, access free CEUs, and more. All of this for just $35 a month. Go to nasm.org slash membership to learn more about NASM One. All right, now to the next one. We've talked about safety. We've talked about goal setting and achieving. Now let's talk about accountability. Accountability is one of the strongest reasons why people come to you. And I get this. I used to get it a lot. And I did just meet with a new person last week. And they said something to me like, uh, I came to you to do resistance training uh, because I can do cardio on my own. <laughs> uh, can you? I mean, yes, you can. You can. I believe you can. Do you? Did you? Is there a history of you doing that? Or is this just a moment where you're basically telling me you hate to do cardio, so you just want to lift weights? And then I'm going to take what you told me your goals are, and I'm going to identify as to whether or not cardiorespiratory activities meet that. 
And if you if you hate, hate, hate doing cardio, then we're going to do some resistance training, which is what you're okay with. And it's going to feel a lot like cardio. It's going to feel a lot like your heart rate is up, like you're doing cardio. And sometimes I do circuits with people. And at the end of the circuits, I do cardio as if they haven't already been doing cardio. But when people tell me that they can do it on their own, then you got to do a real follow-up here, which is, yeah, but will you? You can. I don't have a question whether or not you can. I have a question of whether or not you will. When it comes to accountability, working with a personal trainer, you have scheduled appointments. And that 24-hour cancellation policy that every gym I've ever been associated with has is an accountability policy. Give me 24 hours in advance. Otherwise, you're going to be charged. Why? Because if it's just because you forgot to uh, reschedule the training appointment because you have a happy hour after work that you're going to go to, then that's worth the charge. People come up with all of these things. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. And they reschedule. But within 24 hours, you're keeping that appointment or you're being charged for that appointment. That is one of the reasons why there's a 24-hour um, um, cancellation policy because it is here to make sure that you're accountable. It's scheduled appointments. In addition to appointments, we do check-ins. And if you don't, consider doing it. Consider adding check-ins to what you do. Like, hey, just checking in, seeing how you're doing. Um, one of the things that you had mentioned to me was having trouble with cravings first thing in the morning. What are some of the things that you could do that mitigate those cravings? Is that something that you're heading off at the pass? Are you thinking about that at night? So you're prepared for it in the morning. Are you doing mindfulness? Are you thinking about what your goals are? Because if you don't think about it, you don't set a mindful goal of preparing for something, then you're at the whims of cravings. You're at the whims of tiredness. You're at the whims of, uh, of achy body as you're getting up and you're like, I just don't want to do things. And that makes me want to have muffins or what, you know what I mean? Like, it's not wrong to have a muffin, but if that's your bugaboo and we talked about it and that's a roadblock for you, then we're setting up a system of things that you can do to avoid those things. And I'm going to check in and ensure that you're trying to do what you need to do on your own without me. And it's not just about nutrition. It is about being physically active. Are you walking? Are you getting up? Are you doing uh, less sitting than you were before we started our training program? Are you doing more physical activity outside of our time together? I need to know that. So in order to do check-ins, it is also important to provide homework. It is a list of to-dos, things that you should be doing on your own. And when I say should, I mean because these are conversations that you have with them and then you let them leave with that information. And they said, yes, I feel like this is something I could do, it is attainable, it is achievable, and I want you to do it before you see me next week. I have another time-bound smart goal that I gave to you that outside of the goals that we do in the gym and outside of these macro goals of what you're trying to attain, you have smaller smart goals that you're trying to get. Stuff that you do with me and stuff that you do on your own. I'll ask how to deal with roadblocks prior to when they show up. And I know that it's kind of what we talked about before, but I want to know, like, if there are things that you've done successfully in the past to avoid things that are in your way, are you doing them? Can you focus more on what you can do? And I try to get people to stop focusing on so much on what they can't do. There's a lot of things that I can't do. And I have not really ever reached any of my successes by focusing on what I couldn't do. I don't reach my success on focusing what I cannot do. But I've reached a lot of successes and I've been more successful in many ways than I expected to be in, in my career only because those successes 
compound and they grow because I focus on what I do well. Let me focus on what I do. And the, even things I don't do well doesn't mean I can't do them. It just means that I don't do them well so I can get better. If there's something that I cannot do, I cannot focus on it. If you cannot lose weight, I would just keep going back to losing weight. And I hate that as you know, the example of what to do because, because personal training is so much more. And in fact, personal training has so little to do in many ways with weight loss. I mean, it's, it's the greatest component when coupled with uh, paying attention to your nutrition, getting the proper amount of sleeps, minimizing stress, and doing exercise. And those that exercise and do those things are always more successful than those who just do those things without the exercise. So it's a big component. But it's multifactorial, this weight loss thing. Are you doing what you need to do? And am I here to support you with just one thing, which is exercise? Or can I provide more than that? I want to provide more than that. So let's get those roadblocks out of the way. Fourth thing on my list, because we talked about safety and goal setting and accountability, but let's talk about motivation and inspiration. My sign off for the NASMC PT podcast is keep inspiring people to fitness. Why? Because I cheer for my clients. I cheer for their effort. I cheer for their presence. And I cheer for their success. And I motivate that. I'm going to high five it. I want to ex uh, extol the benefits of exercise. And I want, to, I want to motivate you to continue. So when you show up and you work hard and I get amped, then you're ready to come back and do it again. You don't like how one of those things feel, but you love how the other one feels. And I, and I, as a trainer, you as a trainer, get to provide that. I mean, it is, it is jarring how comfortable it can be, how pleasant it can be for somebody to appreciate the effort that you put in. And if we can be those people for our clients, let's do that. Let's sound off every time they put in the work. And there's a lot of times where I find out that goals and encouraging them to push harder are what they need to have. I want to know, what are, your, what are your goals? I know your goals. But are you thinking about your goals when you come in here? Or are you thinking about just, let me do whatever Rick says? That's cool. I like that because it can still help you get to your goals. But I want you to come in here and I want you to think, I am here for a reason. And I want this outcome. Sometimes the reason morphs into this is just the consistency that I've developed over time. So I'm showing up. And that's cool because that can help you get there. But if you have goals, put that on the forefront. Put that on the forefront. Put it on a sticky paper and slap it on your forehead and say, this is my goal. Do not forget. And that's why I'm here. And then push. And I'll help you. I'll tell new people. And I want you to stay with me on this one. I'll tell new people, good job when they try, even if it's not that good. And I'll tell advanced people what they can do better, even if they did a really good job. I'm going to tell new people, good job even if it wasn't that good because of the effort they put in. But I'll tell really advanced people what they could do better. Doesn't mean I won't tell them good job, but it could be better. Why? I'll, I'll, let, me, let me explain this. So years ago, years ago when I was in high school, <clears throat> I did a poetry read in a tournament in the Thespian tournament. And it was uh, it was poetry. So poetry presentation, poetry reading, whatever it was. And I did this poem. And I remember, uh, and, and I won. I won the competition. Just uh, let me lead with this. I was the winner, winner, mm, Thespian chicken, a dinner. I crushed it for whatever reason. And then you get the feedback from those that judged you. 
And I remember getting feedback saying 95 out of 100. And then everything on the, you know, the scale, that little Likert scale of this was really, this was not good. And this was great. Everything was checked off great. Now, I felt like I was pretty good. But if you're going to give me a 95 and not give me any constructive feedback, then why give me a 95 and not a 100%? So you can tell me, good job. I appreciate that. But if it's only a 95 and you don't tell me what I needed to do to get 100 or why I didn't get 100%, then I feel like that is a flaw on your end, especially not just being a judge, right? The judge isn't to teach you. That judge is to tell you where you missed out and I can extrapolate from what I didn't do well, what I need to work on to do better. But as a trainer, your job isn't just to say good job. It is to say, now do it this way. You get top level boxers fighting. They're about to go into a ring. The last thing they need to hear from you is good job, good job. The entire time they need to know what they can do better so that they can win that prize money, so that they can keep their head attached to their bodies, so that they are doing everything they can to be successful in that combat sport. It's important to cheer them, but it is vital for the advanced people that you do the extra guidance. They need a lot less cheering and they need a lot more clarity on how they can get better. Cool. (sighs) Use a great effort or performance. You're going to tell people how inspired they are, how inspired you are that they did a good job. Whenever somebody does a, a great effort, whenever somebody pushes themselves hard, whenever they work so hard, you can take their pulse from their teeth and you watch them Tell them that they inspired you. Let them know that I'm so inspired. I watched you do, you crushed this workout and I cannot wait to do my own workout today because you elevated me. Let them be an inspiration to you. They got to be an inspiration to you. And here's why. In the book Spark by Dr. John Reedy, talks about the the guy who was making everybody run the mile and there was one girl and she was really slow and uh and then he finally got heart rate monitors he was able to to manage get heart rate monitors and yeah heart and you know kids are running fast and he's applauding this is really good and then there's this girl and she's just terrible time-wise terrible but but you know what they did they took um the heart rate and they measured the heart rates And this girl's heart rate was so hot. She had so much more physiological effort than any of the other people that he, it completely changed his perspective. And he was like, yes, you're fast, but you don't work as hard as her. Yes, you got great times, but you don't work as hard as her. Yes. You are on the track team. Yes, you got accolades and won prizes for what your outcomes were, but you do not win the prize for being the hardest worker. You don't win that prize. And so you, young lady, inspire them to work harder and push themselves physiologically to increase how those outcomes can come about and your clients can do that for you. And the last thing I wanna talk about on that list of five, because we have safety, goal setting, accountability, motivation and inspiration. And finally, what do you think I'm gonna say? What do you think? This is the funny part, right? So you're thinking of something and I'm gonna say it, you're gonna be like, oh, that's not what I was gonna say. You should have said this, and you may be right, but I'm going to say number five is we're going to help people change their behaviors. Looking at behavior change is probably more important than anything else. You know, they've got to change behaviors in order to see a difference. And one of the first things when it comes to behavior change that you as a personal trainer provide is you help 
people develop consistency. And you hear consistency is key. Consistency. It doesn't even matter if you do the best workout. As long as you are doing it consistently, you will probably get benefit from it. As long as you don't hurt yourself. One of the most important means of achieving success is doing the work consistently, not doing it the hardest, not doing it the most, just being consistent, showing up. And we help people change behaviors by helping them develop consistency. Under behavior, develop consistency. And there's also, we want to empower you to do your exercises on your own. And I hate when trainers don't do this. I hate when they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just do whatever you want. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but you can also make a copy of the program that you just gave them, the workout you just did, and send it to them and say, this is a difficult workout for you to do on your own. Do this X, Y, and Z. Or take this workout. It's perfect. You did a great job. Now, instead of doing everything differently, every workout I do is different, you're going to only get better at something that you practice. So take the same workout, do it two more times before I see you on next Tuesday. Do it twice more. Make sure you get it one time in during the week and another time in on the weekend. And I'll see you the following week. And I need you to let me know that you did those. So we're helping to change behaviors and we're helping people be accountable to that. We're going to encourage activity outside of the gym. That's important. And then one of the most important things is helping our clients to develop a growth mindset. Growth mindset, uh, is, by the way, there's an amazing book by Dr. Carol Dweck called Growth Mindset. And I think that it's important to realize that you are not stuck. You're not stuck. And we are here to fortify clients, to help push them, to help them grow, to help them exceed, to help them enjoy the challenges that we're putting in front of them. So the growth mindset is helping somebody know that you are not stuck where you are. Now, you may never get to where you want to be, but your growth mindset allows you to focus on what you can do instead of focusing on what you can't. Or as I often say, do what you can, not what you can't. And there's a lot of people out there focusing on what they can't do. So you, as a personal trainer, are a change agent. You as a personal trainer are the inspiration that people need. You as a personal trainer are the tour guide towards physical and even mental betterment. You as a personal trainer are the key to help people unlock untapped potential and move forward. And you, as a personal trainer, are worth the money that you charge because of the value you provide. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family, and leave a comment, if you will. That does help our, uh, our tracking, and we appreciate that. If you want to reach out to me, you can hit me up. Uh, you can do so on Instagram at dr.rickrichie or email me rick.richie at nasm.org. As I said earlier, keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.